It almost seems ludicrous today to think that the election of Thomas Jefferson, a Virginian plantation owner who owned slaves, was considered in 1800 nearly a revolution. Why? First, it's hard for us today to understand the hatred that existed between the Federalists and the Republicans in the period of time leading up to the election of 1800. The Federalists deemed to be pro-British and the Republicans were enthusiastic supporters of the French Revolution, long after its excesses were known. The Federalists were the supporters of a strong central government, and the Republicans the opponents. The Republicans seemed to believe that the Federalists were planning to reestablish the monarchy in the U.S., while the Federalists seemed to believe that the Republicans were going to bring the French Revolution to American shores. The election itself was one of the hardest fought with personal attacks, one Republican attacks on Adams, even claiming that he had sent General Pinckney to England to procure four pretty girls, two for himself and two for Pinckney. The election itself produced its own cliffhanger. Both Jefferson and Burr, his running mate, received the same number of electoral votes. And, as Burr refused to step aside, the election had to be decided in the House of Representatives, in which the defeated Federalists still controlled more states. Ultimately, Alexander Hamilton, despite his dislike of Jefferson, decided on what he considered the lesser of two evils, Jefferson over Burr, and the election was decided in Jefferson's favor. In the closing days of the Adams administration, the new Judiciary Act was passed, and that established a new set of federal courts, Circuit Court of Appeals, to whose bench Adams promptly appointed Federalist. Adams was able to make one final contribution to the Federalist cause, when he appointed John Marshall as the new Chief of Justice of the Supreme Court. Marshall, of course, was handing down decisions that strengthened the authority of the central government long after Jefferson was dead. Jefferson began his term of office with a conciliatory inaugural address, stating in the beginning that we are all Republicans, we are all Federalists. Jefferson immediately took action, however, both in substance and style, for major changes for that of his Federalist predecessor. In terms of style, he walked from his inaugural address at the Capitol back to the White House. He was known to open the door in the White House, as well as to take other actions with a common touch. More importantly, Jefferson administration took actions to shrink the federal government, cut federal spending, worked to pay off the debt, and shrunk the Navy. Jefferson was a strong believer in gunboats, which he favored building instead of larger frigates. Eventually, the needs of a large and growing country overcame even Jefferson's attempt to limit the government. It almost